Hi again, everybody. I'm Jamie Allison, and this is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. This is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different fields, different niches, different uh, uh, things that they are doing in their field of expertise that, uh, that we can transfer into our lives and, and things that are just um, you know, great stories to be able to hear kind of how they've been able to make big moves in, in their areas. And, and I know I have one of those guests today. You're gonna be really happy uh, with being able to listen to, uh, to this one. And, and just before we jump into that, um, if you've listened to the podcast um, recently, you'll know that, um, um, that one of the things that, that I enjoy and a lot of the, the other people that we've talked to Joy, enjoy um, craft beer. And uh, we've made this uh, kind of really cool relationship with something called um, Athletic Brewing Craft Beer, because so many people are so um, connected with um, fitness and wellness that listen to this as well, is that um, Bill and John, who are the, the guys that we've kind of connected with down at Athletic, um, and they like doing that, but they wanted something that um, came in a non-alcoholic um, beer so that that way they could do all of those things, whether it's socially or with their own wellness, um, to be able to uh, still have the flavors of craft beer, but do it in a non-alcoholic way. And, and so um, all of their beers come in at between 50 and 70 calories. Um, and uh, so it allows you to be able to not have to compromise. You can have it after a workout, all of those things, and it uh, um, not have the same kind of impact. And also socially, you can uh, it doesn't uh, uh, affect your lifestyle that way as well. So try it out. If you go to our Instagram bio uh, inside there, you'll see right now that uh, there is a link and you get free shipping for orders of two or or more six packs. So uh, definitely check it out. Um, and you'll see uh, again, that's athletic brewing craft beer. So today, again, really happy to have Sola Sergarder daughter. Um, and she is a CrossFit athlete from Iceland, um, right now based in the UK doing her studies. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. She's twice been a CrossFit Games um, team athlete and has competed in the European regionals. And back in October, um, she took the Madrid championships for her first really big win. So that's really cool. Hopefully we could talk about that. Um, and she's in school to be a chiropractor and uh, is a Nike uh, training athlete too, I believe. Um, so first of all, I know you have a really busy, varied life going on right now now Sola so thanks for taking the time we really appreciate it yeah of course my pleasure all right um so you know well first of all I will tell you that I know that uh, we talked just before we came on that I, I probably butchered your last name a little bit I tried as as, as much as I could um, but uh, you know I know people are so used to seeing it now because you have um, really kind of created quite a profile for yourself in the last little while um you know, do you still follow, like when you're in uh, doing your studies right now, are you following what's happening in the CrossFit space when you're not actively doing it right at that time? Like that we're, we're talking right now, just after the Rogue Invitational, do you still kind of follow that when you're not there? Yeah, I do. Uh, that's my like, like I check the CrossFit thing, like Instagram is my like main source of, um, of news there. And then yeah. I check everything else, like the, the actual news, you know? Yeah, but um, yeah, the Rogue um, Invitational. I watched that this weekend. Of course, wouldn't miss it, and it was just yeah, it was so much fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, exciting right till the end. I know, and and it was be, being an athlete to yourself. Do you have do you have favorites that you're kind of uh, going for while that's going on, or is it just kind of seeing it as a bit of a peer because those are people you've actually you know competed with or against as well? I think it's like a little bit of both. I was thinking this weekend, like, damn, I would like to be out there and compete and like how I would do in each event and, and, and stuff like that. But then I also have like formed a good bond with many of the girls there and they're good, my good friends. And like, I do root for some people, of course. Um, and in this particular, um, like in Rogue, um, my two good friends from the program, training program uh Jacqueline and Gabby were um Gabby actually placed third which is amazing yeah. so I was yeah. reading for them like mostly um and then obviously the Icelanders you're always like yeah, sure yeah. but <laughs> well, you know Icelanders and us we just stick together as well yeah and that that's funny because um one thing um so we had Annie Thoris daughter on um, a while ago and um, I asked her the same question but I ask you as, as well is that um, there are so many high level athletes not just in CrossFit but in a bunch of different sports that come from Iceland which is a relatively small population for how many people are representative in those what what do you think is the reason behind that like why do you think it's it's um, 
sport is so huge coming out of Iceland? Um, well, CrossFit, it, it was it, it got introduced in Iceland relatively early. So like in like 211, like people were actually doing CrossFit and I started in yeah. 213. And uh, so people are like, uh, people in Iceland are like, good. Uh, yeah. You can hear like when my friends come over to CrossFit Reykjavik and they see the like people in just the class like the five five o'clock class and they're like majority of them are doing like muscle ups and stuff and which is like really they're like what <laughs> like, is this normal class it's like yeah yeah <laughs> um but i i think because iceland is so small like it's everything is so close to you and uh, and it's just like you are connected to the, all those people like because we are so few and you just think like if they can be good at this, like I can be good at this, like why can't I be good at this as well? It's different than when I just watch someone from Canada or something do something yeah. like amazing, you know, I was thinking like, well, like never gonna be able to do that. But when I actually ha see like a fellow Icelander do something, I'm like, okay, like I, there's nothing that says that I can't do this as well. Yeah. Um, so we kind of like uplift each other that way, I guess. It's just like, it's so, like the society is like so tight well and the other thing that um iceland is has been very forefront in has been um uh equality gender equality and women in leadership and and things like that that uh, you know they're they're known around the world of having moved uh, uh, moved ahead very quickly compared to a lot of other countries is that something that do you see that there now that you've gone to other places and everything too do you see it as being different kind of than where um than the society you've kind of come from as well yeah iceland is um it's good in a lot of ways uh, yeah. and gender yeah. equality is one of them and yeah. i um like i i'm i'm proud to be icelandic when it comes to it comes to this and a lot of other things and I can definitely see like the difference now like living in the UK and and like I've traveled quite a bit and yeah. and it yeah. makes me proud to be from Iceland where people actually like deal with this and uh, talk about it and and like it's not like taboo or yeah like if there's a problem like women will speak up in Iceland right and that uh, yeah that's like uh, yeah it's really cool actually yeah, and it yeah. just teaches you like as well to speak up like I I'm not afraid to speak up if I have something on my mind or um because we're just brought up like that yeah like well, yeah. our our opinion and our voice matters as much as as anyone else like as men's well and it's interesting because that's that's a big part of it is that growing up knowing that that's the norm I think it makes a huge difference I'm sure um so you you right now I mean you're you're in school that we've we've kind of talked about that before but you're uh, um not long ago you also had um you know I know you've you've kind of won and placed really highly in other competitions but I'm assuming that the Madrid Madrid competition was has was something special for you do you want to kind of talk about kind of your experience there yeah, it was. Um, it was really fun. Uh, I didn't think or expect that I would win when I came yeah. into the competition. Um, but uh, it's the first. It well, it is like the first big competition I do where my focus is solely on me, mm -hmm. and that was my focus the whole weekend. I wasn't thinking about anybody else. Um, and that was kind of a new thing, I guess, a little bit. Um, and also having been with a program team, uh, like I was training in Mallorca before coming back to the UK a little bit before the competition. So I trained there and they um, just kind of showed me that I can actually, like I'm better than I think I am and like gave me a little bit of confidence boost. And I guess it's just like when a lot of small things come together, and yeah. click like a good thing can happen and and things just click this weekend i guess yeah and, wow and yeah, it was really fun well uh, i mean how do you now after that i mean you've come back you you've you've really focused on that for a while and then you've got to really focus on school and all of those things you know how do you um 
how do you kind of balance those things yourself? Because um, you still, I would assume, even when you're at school, are probably having to keep up. You might not be as an intense a routine, but how do you how do you kind of measure all those things off in in the kind of lifestyle you have? Um, it is like I'm not gonna lie, it is hard. Um, yeah. I I am um, now when I'm in school, I train one session a day unless I can fit into like maybe on the weekends and Fridays. Yeah. Um, but I and like that's something I had to like come to terms with as well to to train one session a day and I would rather do like one good session a day and like focus on my sleep and nutrition and stuff like that like do that good as well um and do like one good session instead of like two like eh, once you know and like study in between and obviously attend classes and stuff like that so um but it does get a little bit hectic sometimes. And I like I have to like sit down and be like, okay, just breathe now. Cause like obviously the school is hard. And yeah. like I'm trying my best to do both of those things. Uh, but I just really believe if if I can just keep my cool and and do all the things I'm doing a hundred percent, um that I'll be fine. And I know this won't last forever as well. Um, So, yeah, I just tried to, when I'm training, like, I'm just training. And when I'm not training, like, I'm studying. And it's good to have a routine. I mean, routines are, like, I I thrive in routines. And, like, I really like having a good routine. And and this is a good environment. Like, I feel really good. Uh, Like, sometimes I guess a little bit, like like a lot but I still feel really good and and yeah I uh, I actually feel like this routine is better than sometimes in the summer when I'm like in Iceland or and my routine is a little bit like iffy um I don't feel as good so like it's yeah it's fine so you have that real kind of routine I guess so I'm assuming you're one of those people that probably have a calendar that's all kind of pretty pretty mapped out most of the time do you when you set up your own goals and what you want to achieve, like, do you, do you take that same approach to it? Like, is it very much like, do you have, I want to do these five things this year? I, how, do, how do you approach goal setting or do you at all? Or does it just kind of come along? I actually, like, I, I would like to say that I like write my goals down and stuff like that, but I actually <laughs> don't. And I, I never have, um, I get like I guess they're just kind of in the back of my mind and I work towards them um because I it's pretty clear what I want to do uh, and I don't really need it written down yeah you know like what I want to do now is just like pass all my exams like that's my top priority uh, this year because failing <laughs> the year would cost me a lot of time and a lot of money <laughs> right. I'm not prepared to do so like that's my top one priority and for that I need to study and I need to keep my academics up and then I want to do good at the like the semi-finals yeah and I know what I have to do for this like it's pretty those are my goals and um and I know I know what I need to do to to achieve them uh, like although I don't have it written down you know you've you've kind of talked about um that part of it and also how you deal with nutrition and things does that does that change um like for you are are you pretty detailed with um you know how you go through nutrition i know you've even said in the past you had to to kind of deal with kind of how to how to best fuel your body and and things like that how do you do that when when things are so busy and does it change as it gets closer to actually switching to a competition mode so right now when i'm here in the uk i actually like i count my macros now just because i am mentally i mentally capable of it right now and um and it just makes me feel better during like tra- like for training and during the day and like it, it just i perform better when i do it um so i do it here um but i'm not like obsessed about it if the guys go for pizza one time like i go for pizza or like like it's if i have a successful counting day it's good if i don't it's also fine you know um but like all the little things add up and and like if I am mostly like good, yeah, I'll be fine. Um, but leading up after a competition, I guess it's just like dial it in like a little bit more and yeah. the days before like get some more carbs in and 
and during the competition like i don't count just eat as much as possible you know one of the the things that um that you have you've built you've built a pretty big online presence to go along with all the other stuff um is that something that you've um did you methodically do that or is it just something that you know has has grown because you just happen to be kind of active because you're a young person who's active you know it, how how has that worked for you because you have sponsorships all those fun things too so yeah i guess it just kind of happened uh i didn't like plan on yeah <laughs> being like 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 my life being that much on social media yeah um, it just kind of happened and obviously a lot of good things come with it. So I'm not like, I'm really thankful for it actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it allows me as well to, like, I don't need to like work Yeah. Um, because my work is social media as well and training. Um, so that gives me more time to train like during the summers and like now I don't need my weekends like, saved for like doing some work so um it actually allows me to live the life uh, that i live and i'm really grateful for it and and yeah it like it is fun to have a big social media but it also comes with uh, like a lot of responsibility and like and i yeah. think a lot about what i put in there as well yeah. well and, and you've been pretty open about some of the the not so great stuff about being on social media and being prominent as well. I mean, there's there's also that side that's not so fantastic because you know you are having to be so open with things and and you can't control what people say and things like that. Has that been something that you've kind of had to grow through a little bit as well yourself? Yeah, I guess you kind of just like I don't really see it anymore, like yeah. the comments and. And whatever, if somebody like most of the people are really nice, so I yeah, uh, yeah. So there's like one in one voice, like here and there. It's just like I don't really pay any attention to it anymore. Yeah. So, but I think ninety nine point nine percent of it is actually like people are often like more often than not really yeah. nice, really positive. Okay, um, and. Um... You mentioned um, the whole part of kind of getting your head in the right space and things as you come up to to going into a competition. Um, do you do things from a, like uh, some people say they have um, um, you know they really have to do things mentally and in, in that in that time like mental performance stuff whether it's you know visualization or any of that stuff. Do you do you do any of that or is it something like how how do you get yourself ready um, not just physically but but in the right headspace before a competition. Yeah, I guess it kind of just happens automatically when yeah. like a day before the competition, when I know the workouts I'm going to do the morning after and stuff like that, I just nothing else comes to mind than me doing the workout. I'm like counting my reps in my brain, like <laughs> visualizing how I'm doing it and what can go wrong and like fixing that and what can go right. And like visualizing, like seeing the other competitors, like how am I going to react when like she passes me or like like all the scenarios like going through my head yeah. obviously it's important to have a positive outcome of the like that sure um, like scenario but that's what goes through my head like and when i my head hits the pillow it's like okay let's go one more time like one two three <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like yeah. visualizing every like repetition every movement like visualizing mm -hmm how you see out of like your own eyes, you know, and like visualizing you like as a third person doing the workout. And before the last workout in Madrid, when it's like, if I lose, mm -hmm. like I'm going to lose um, the competition or like I'll, I'll play second probably. Yep. Um, and I don't know how many times I went over that like workout in my head. Uh, yeah. but always with like a positive outcome because I knew I could do it I just had to like I just had to physically do it you know when when you're going through that process you know do you um do you find like is it uh, you said that we look at it positively but do you have times where you have to like when you're going through something and you suddenly feel like your your body is just really starting to to break down do you do you feel that and and do you does it do anything to your head or how do you get past it when suddenly you, you doubt yourself? Have you had that happen? Like in the competition, like yeah. during it, well, it's either like what's going to hurt worse 
like this right here now or losing you know and yeah. which is gonna last longer <laughs> and i like for the last workout i was just like there is no way i'm gonna lose <laughs> like this thing i've worked hard for like for the past three days like there, like uh yeah there's just there wasn't an option you know yeah. yeah um and but obviously you have some times when you are like you can't really control it but i yeah. i guess it, it is it is kind of a practice as well because i yeah. obviously have had times when i'm like i can't control my brain and and i slow down sure. but it it is like it is practice and I feel like I'm finally maybe getting a hang of it a, a little bit. And, and do you have um, do you have mentors? Or I mean, you mentioned that you've got people, you know, training partners that are high level partners and everything as well. Do you have do you have mentors or people that you kind of look up to to, to kind of learn how uh, you know as you've went through this? Or is there is there somebody that kind of was was special from that end too? Well, you always just hear like the elite, like athletes, the the best of the best, like how they speak about it. Yeah. And you notice that it makes a lot of sense. Like first, when they speak about it, like how they do things mentally, you're like, maybe don't really take that much. Yeah, you're like, ah, oh, that mental aspect can't really like be that much of a part of it. Like, yeah. but yeah. then when you're actually like getting deeper and deeper into it, you actually realize that it is a huge, huge part, and your brain can make or break you in like any scenario and it like yeah. really really matters what you think and and like what you think of yourself and 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 what mental shape you're in so i like i love to listen to them when they are talking about how they do stuff and like kind of try to like contribute that into my like my things i do before competitions or or in a hard workout or yeah like yeah that. well and a lot of them do it, it does seem to be the the thing that separates some of the best people is uh, it, it becomes less about those little bits of physical stuff than it is about how they handle something mentally. It seems it's to like, be the difference. Like most of them are pretty similar, like athletic right. level. It's yeah. just like who is, who's the mentally strongest, you know, who can hurt the most, who like can tell the brain to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, one of the other things that um, you know when we've went through is um, uh, you know if if you weren't doing CrossFit because you obviously do CrossFit high level and are are really I mean when you're when you're talking about I only do one one workout a day a lot of people would oh my gosh you you know you've cut back to one workout a day so if you were um, uh, if you were any doing any other sport but CrossFit what would it be you know have i mean i know in iceland you grow up doing a bunch of different sports i'm sure because a lot of people do um is there one that if you weren't doing crossfit what would you be doing i think i would be doing like a triathlon thing yeah like an ultra i would be yeah. some kind of an ultra runner or and never in a million years when i was young would i i like think that i would be like interested in doing anything like that but uh, uh the last like three four years yeah. um i've actually like it it tweaks me a lot doing yeah. the ultra runs or the like iron man things and when i don't do cross it anymore i'm probably going to be doing that well it's and that's like, that's often the transition to something like that that's maybe a little less i don't want to say hard on the body but there may be things that it's a little easier on the body in some ways i guess too right yeah and it's just like it's a great mental test as well and i i i love to test that like how yeah how hard can i push for like on the bike for how long and uh, and like it's another kind of hurt when you're like i'm dying but i still have like six hours to go yeah. you know it's a little like a little bit different kind of mental like uh, puzzle so um yeah i love to i'd love to explore that a little bit uh once i'm done with this now how um how far along are you in your uh schooling uh for uh, to be a chiropractor like how many are you years away or how far are you now i'm in second year of four yeah okay so you could say i'm years away you're, yeah, <laughs> no, you're, no, you're like years away but it's it's two and, it, and a half year it. more right yeah i can i yeah it's actually going somewhere and 
Yeah. And honestly, now like the days are passing so fast, and I'm like, I can't really keep up. It's like, yeah. wow, it's like Friday again, and then it's Friday again. And it's, <laughs> it's crazy how fast it passes. Yeah. Now, do any of your uh, student peers, is it strange for them to be beside somebody who's like winning the, the Madrid championship and stuff? Do they ever, uh, ever mention it? <laughs> honestly, I think, um, I don't think they know that much like what I do because <laughs> yeah. um, uh, obviously with COVID last year we didn't see I we didn't see anybody in school like it was all like Zoom sure so yeah. and now in the school gym where I train people are like <laughs> who's that yeah <laughs> with this and what is she doing and like <laughs> um, so I guess I I do draw a little bit of attention to myself in the school gym but yeah but um, yeah that's all good, like fun and good very it's cool fine. Very cool. Uh, yeah. um, so one of the things, Solo, that we always do with any of our guests is that we um, we try to um, to get a couple of kind of quick, um, you know, whether it's tips or or um, uh, action items that people can do themselves to to implement some of the things that uh, our guests have done. And and so um, because you do have, like, we've been talking all along that you have um, uh, have had to really balance all the different parts of your life to, to kind of make sure that fitness and wellness can still be a big part of it. Um, do you have, um, you know, two or three kind of tips as to how people can do that to make sure that in their busy lives, whether they're a student or, or somebody working, that they can keep, um, you know, fitness and wellness and in a, a, a big part of their life, I guess? Yeah, for me, it's, it's really important that people know that you can do two things and it's not one thing or the other. Um, you can still be pretty good at like both things. So what I like to do is just, as I said before, keep a good routine. Like I'm always in bed by 11 and I, or like before 11 and I wake up at like seven, mm -hmm. like all days. It's not like sleeping in on weekdays. And, and I know it sounds horrible, but actually it's really good for you. Um, and when I wake up, I'm like up and I take two hours working on my computer, like getting all the stuff done that I need to be like need done for tomorrow so it's like I don't need to think about that anymore um I have a specific time I train like it's like it, the routine is just like really it's essential if you have a lot going on and if you want to do well in uh, like a lot of aspects in your life so the routine is like number one and two and three keep that and that is like my number one yeah tip. and just like don't forget as well to have fun sometimes and and like let loose and like go with your friends to the bar and stuff like that just be human yeah. as well um and just like breathe as well it just like everything's gonna be okay and it gets overwhelming sometimes but um just remember that it's a feeling and it's not it doesn't define what you're doing the feeling that passes and then like gonna be like okay five minutes I'm gonna be like a little bit overwhelmed and then I'm gonna get get myself together and carry on you know yeah yeah I I love that idea that you've said a few times even when you've talked about when you go through those tough times in a in a race or whatever it is that um you know you said it's what's the what's worse if I can get past this or the feeling later and um you know it's almost the same thing throughout life as well right is that if uh um, that things move on and so it will end at some point too and you, you said even with school four years suddenly your two years in is pretty uh, happens pretty fast so it doesn't take long for those things to pass quickly yeah well um, so if people are trying to follow you I mean I know a lot of people already do that would be listening but if they haven't seen that yet what are some of the best ways to follow what you're doing solo over the next little while so just I, I just use Instagram for now I'm not like on TikTok or anything like that uh, so Instagram <laughs> uh, my Instagram account is Sola and I'm pretty yeah I try to be pretty active there and show people yeah. like also just like real life and not just training videos but just like I try to be keep it real well and what we'll do is we'll put that uh, we'll put your handle in the show notes and everything too so if uh, anybody listening um you can click on there and and definitely uh follow because it is nice to see that it's not just kind of one one side it is kind of a snapshot in in your life which is kind of cool so um if you haven't hit subscribe on the podcast make sure you do that right now um also go to our instagram page which is big idea underscore big moves um we have uh, great guests like sola every week so uh so 
So definitely uh, make sure that you're subscribing because then it comes through to you uh, before anybody else. So uh, uh, again, thank you for taking the time. I know that uh, uh, with the time difference and with you in classes and everything, and we've, uh, we've really kind of moved things around to make sure that we could make this connection. So thank you so much for taking the time. So I really appreciate it. Thank you as well. My pleasure. All right. And we will talk to everybody else again on Big Idea, Big Moves. Wow.